Hi, I'm David Mackley from Intelligent Retail. This is our series on EPOS systems. And today we're talking about EPOS software. What is EPOS software? And in particular, the back office. So we're going to look at the different functions in the back office system. The back office. The first function we'll look at is product management. Of course, most retailers will have thousands of different products in their shop. So it's got to be incredibly easy and quick to put products onto the system. So the sort of things you'll be doing is adding the product name, a description of the product, which supplier it's come from, the cost of that item, the sale price of that item, any discounts, and the VAT. You might also want to put on a picture for that item as well. So those are the key things. There's also additional elements like pack sizes and supplier codes and barcodes. So there's a fair bit of information to put on, and so it's got to be quick and easy, so keep an eye out for that. So that's adding a single product. These days, good EPOS systems will allow you to add multiple products in one go, because suppliers will sometimes, if not often, be able to provide a spreadsheet for you with the products that you've purchased. And it can be very simple to import a spreadsheet into an EPOS system. So make sure that your EPOS system can do that quickly and effectively because you can import hundreds if not thousands of products in one go. So that's adding products on as, a, as the first element. Um, the second element we're going to look at is managing the different elements of the business. And Let's start off with customers. So in your customers, this is where all your customer details will sit. There'll be a database, and in that you'll have uh, the customer's name, their address, whether they've got an account with you, and, uh, and what their email address is. So from there, you can extract their email address for marketing. You can extract their postal addresses for, for mailing them, and of course, telephone numbers as well. Uh, so that's customers. Then you've also got suppliers and a single supplier database. You should only ever do things once in an EPOS system. So add a supplier once and then leave it. Every time you add a product from that supplier, it should be just a drop-down list of some kind to quickly select that supplier. And then you're done. So that's suppliers. And then staff. So you should be able to add your staff on and you should be able to track the number of sales they're making, what their average sale values are, that type of thing. Uh, so those are the key areas of business management. So the next thing is discounts. And discounts at the back office are those sort of discounts where you want to sale today or if you want to sale in uh, two weeks' time and you can plan that. And it could be all types, whether it's percentage sales or buy one, get one free. So have a look at what type of um, discounts are available. This can sometimes be a limitation in EPOS systems because it gets pretty complex to design um, discounts. Also check if they can be multi-layered because some systems you can only have one layer of discount for any one product and that can get very limiting. So, uh, so have a look at the, uh, the levels of discounts that can be applied. Next is the big one, that's reports and this is one of the reasons that people like to buy an EPOS system in the first place. And what sort of reports are you going to get? Before you look at an EPOS system, I would suggest thinking through what types of reports you want to run your business because um, you can be easily bamboozled with the, the number and the range of different reports and sometimes they can be overly complex. So they should be kept simple and specific and have a particular purpose for your business. Um, you should be able to drill into different areas of your business, whether it's by department or sub-department and run reports on there. And you should also be able to get flight deck type reports with an EPOS system. So look at graphs. So how how is the, the, the how are the trends going for any particular line, or how are the trends going for the business on profit or average customer sale value, etc. So um, main advice there is to think beforehand before you see um, an EPOS system of what reports you need for your business. Okay, so moving on to accounts. Now uh, an account system is very different to an EPO system. EPO systems should be great at stock management and running a retail business, not necessarily doing all the accounts as well. I would recommend that uh, an EPO system will link into a good accounts package like QuickBooks or Sage. And the advantage of that is your accountant would know one of those applications anyway. They wouldn't know your EPO system and there, and there would be additional expense incurred in getting them to learn it and buying a license for it. 
So uh, definitely look at integration with an accounts package. It will save an awful lot of time. And finally, we've got websites. So these days, more and more independent retailers want to have a website for their business. And there's good reason why as well. Um, think about this. If you have a separate website, then how are you going to add products to your website? Is it different to your EPOS system? Are you going to have to do things twice? What happens with stock control? Uh, if you sell the last item in the shop, does the website know about it? Is that product going to be taken off the website immediately? Or might someone buy it and you won't have any left? Then you've got to chase around finding a product if that's available for that customer. Or you might even let the customer down. So having a separate website is like running a separate business. A good current modern EPOS system should allow very good integration with websites with single stock control where you only put your products on once and, uh, and you've got single reporting as well. So keep an eye out for that. That's a key part of a back office system for an EPOS uh, piece of software these days. So that's it. A quick introduction to the EPOS back office. I hope you found that useful. For more information, please go to intelligentretail.com. Thanks for your time.